Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we're at Tasting Whiskey the Right Way, episode three. And the first one, the first episode uh, was about the glasses itself. Uh, the second one about the mood you should have to taste whiskey really good, not to become addicted to whiskey or alcohol at all. And today, we really talk about whiskey and tasting whiskey, how I personally taste whiskey. Most people <laughs> do not cane in or swing the glass uh, and drink whiskey. Uh, most of the people don't give themselves a shot of whiskey. Uh, most will not use ice for our single malt whiskey. Most will use a tulip shaped glass as I showed in episode one. Um, <clears throat> the amount of whiskey is a good dram. That's enough for tasting whiskey. The glass you should choose about your imagination, how strong the whiskey will be. The stronger, the bigger the glass, as I said in episode one. The first you're doing is uh, you do an optical assessment of the whiskey, um, whether it's dark, it's light, like this one, or dark, as sherry, uh, cast matured whiskey, um, like this Beaumont, 18 years old, or this Ben Rinnis, 1999, which is quite light and matured in a refill cask. Um, you wet the inner surface of the glass to have a bigger surface from which uh, aromas are able to evaporate. So you have a very uh, a relatively small surface on the liquid in the glass. And if you roll the glass and wet the inner side of the glass, then you multiply the surface from which the aromas are able to evaporate. That's the reason why I always roll the glass in my hand and wetting the inner surface of the glass. Ah, wonderful. The other way is to shake the glass. Some people say, well, that's not good. Uh, it's too disturbing, the whiskey. Uh, well, it depends. Um, when I have a strong whiskey in terms of ABV, a lot of alcohol in it, then I shake the glass so that the first strong alcohol uh, fades away and then I roll the glass and have my sniff. Um, after the rolling you see those, no, probably not, you see those legs, those drop running, running down the inside of the glass, they are called church windows. Those legs uh, remind me of, or the connoisseur of those Gothic uh, classical window shaped uh, window shapes inside those French cathedrals like this. And so they are the church windows or the legs and uh, <clears throat> they show the viscosity, the physical property of the whiskey and the viscosity. And uh, the more legs you see, the more viscose the whiskey is. And this depends, no, not of the age of the whiskey, but primarily uh, from the ABV. Uh, uh, whiskey is primarily uh, a mixture of alcohol and water, 98%, something like this. And the highest viscosity is around 43 to 46% ABV. It's just a physical uh, thing in whiskey and because most of the whiskies uh, have 40% ABV for the mass market, the better ones have 43 or 46 and then you see those legs and say, well, it's a better whiskey. Hmm? Uh, there is an influence of the oils in the whiskey which are driven over by distillation. Uh, some people say oh, those fusel oils, others say it's uh, uh, aromas, uh, taste substances. 
Um, and these oil, oils also give a little bit of viscosity to the mixture of water and whiskey. Um, then that's it with the optical assessment uh, and we go over to nosing. You see myself swinging the glass from one side of the nose to the other side of the nose. Uh, this is because most people in the world have different sizes of their nose tubes. Um, <clears throat> one is bigger than the other. Uh, your <laughs> ear, nose or, and throat specialist, your doctor, will say, well, we correct that for having a, a, it's exactly the same to move uh, it to the middle. Um, well, they might have a little bit too much of urge for money. Um, but different sizes lead to different speeds of the air inside the tube. And inside uh, the tubes are the molecular receptors. And uh, if the, uh, an aroma molecule moves very fast along those receptors or move slower along the receptors, uh, lead to different results in smelling. Um, the receptors are in your uh, mucosa and uh, Here you can smell different aromas. So I move the glass from one side to the other, from the faster tube to the slower tube, and from the slower to the faster, and there you're able to smell a lot more than before. Have a look at the mirror. It's uh, very possible that your nose is also a little asymmetrically, that your nasal septum is on one side, is more on one side. Um, then we're coming to tasting um, and there is an old tale from a distillery manager who says well you should have the whiskey at least one second in your mouth for each year it matured in a cask. So this one is 18 years old, no 13 years old, so 13, 13 seconds uh, for getting the full impact. Most often when I taste the whiskies here in front of the camera I have not, do not have the time for such a long uh, impact in, your, in my mouth um, because I'm saying nothing <laughs> during that time. Just rawr. That means heavy or <laughs> impressive or strong. Um, uh, but I very often interrupt this uh, tasting uh, for giving you uh, a faster feedback how the whiskey is. Um, there's a different, it's different how you taste the whiskey on your tongue, at the roof of your mouth, the palate, the, the palatine, and in the back. Uh, it's completely described with a mouthfeel. There's mouth watering effects for a certain type of whiskies. There's a production of saliva in your mouth, so that you sometimes have to gulp a second time to get rid of, <laughs> rid of it. Uh, and all this is the sensoric feeling in your mouth. There's, uh, some people say uh, they are chewing the whiskey as I did before. Uh, this leads to a complete uh, uh, coverage of the inside of your mouth. Then you wouldn't have the complete impact in your mouth and there are noises. Well, and very often people say, oh, you're so noisy during tasting. Ah, oh, horrible. Can you leave that out? No, I can't. This is really important and those noises come with the mouthfeel.
That's important. If you can't <laughs> turn down the volume about 10, 15 seconds, then it's gone. Uh, well, that's it. If you swallow, um, how long does the whiskey last? How deep will be the warmth down to your stomach? All those feelings during swallowing. And if you have swallowed the whiskey, then the aromas come back upward from the back uh, of your yeah, palate to the front and in the nose, from the back in your nose. And uh, this is really important. There has been a scientific investigation from the University of Dresden and they found out that the aromas coming from the back are more rewarding than the ones coming from the front. Uh, this goes back to the evolutionary times of Homo sapiens, uh, where, well, you have to reward yourself uh, when you had good food. So swallowing food will lead to uh, satisfactory aroma, uh, satisfactory mind, satis satisfying aroma. Uh, so when you smell a second time on your glass and the aroma has already come back uh, into your nose, then it's more rewarding, more demanding because in former times, in the Stone Age, when you found food, it was important for survival. And this is very important. Don't swallow bad whiskey. <laughs> if you don't like the whiskey, spoil it. If you swallow bad whiskey, you will get uh, a satisfact <laughs> satisfying uh, mood about this whiskey. Really. Um, uh, when you have the whiskey, well, when you had your first sip and then you stay the glass to rest, uh, then the whiskey is already warm. Uh, the aromas uh, rise up from the whiskey and after several quarters of an hour, uh, the whiskey will be exhausted. Uh, so it might be a good idea. There are some glass lids available on the market where you can cover your glass with and then you can have your whiskey longer beside you without uh, tasting and swallowing it, drinking it, drinking, never use drinking, <laughs> tasting it. Um, so the lids help you uh, to preserve the aroma inside the glass. Um, <clears throat> the next morning, when you have finished your whiskey in the evening, then uh, the, uh, the rest of the liquid evaporates and then have a sniff in the next morning. You will find completely different aromas in whiskey, as with the Artback 10. Very strong, intense, peaty. And the next morning, it's sweet. It's really sweet. Uh, and once you've uh, nosed this sweet aroma from the art bag, and you come back the next time to your bottle of art bag 10, and you s sniff in on your glass, you will find the sweetness below the smoky character. Yeah. That's it for the tasting. Ah, I have to, to note that uh, over the summer 2014, we will uh, convert our uh, bottle database here on whiskey.com uh, with several thousand of single malt and other whiskies uh, so that you can add your own feelings about the bottle into our in addition to those pictures and descriptions of those bottles uh, and you can hold your own uh, whiskey collection online and uh, have a rating from one to five stars and uh, add your uh, verbal uh, description tastes tasting uh, reminders of this whiskey online so share 
your knowledge, your wisdom about the whiskey you had with the community. And as a reward, we were able to see all those uh, ratings. And we have already 10,000s of ratings online, uh, which will convert from a different language here into English uh, over the summer. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Please uh, share this video with your friends. And I'm there in the Whiskey Forum to discuss uh, what I've said here with you online.